Hello, hello. Tenth week of the year. We're rock and roll again. And I I'm kinda of standing in the middle of the room, but it's alright. Just uh yet again. Someday someone's gonna reach out to me and say, Ross, you need a bit of help with your camera work. And uh they're gonna tell me what to do. But until then, I'll be alright. I don't know why I'm standing like that either. Maybe I'm a bit nervous. Um one of my thoughts. Good start of the week. We're coming to the end of day one. So we're coming to the end of my Monday for context. And what's been up? Get in the well I've got my what is it? I was gonna say about the when the week look at that. I've even printed it out now as well. So I'm doing this thing. I decided to print it out because last week was right. I had four four things in my mind last week that were key things for me in the business. Smash them out of the park. Don't want to, that sounds a bit overconfident maybe, but it, it's true. I did the, did the key things, which is great. Something that I, uh, I speak to clients a lot about is focusing on the right things. So good week last week in terms of progress on the right stuff. Wrote down this week's and there are five things and one of them's already done. So there you go. Good uh, good start to the week. But the, the other ones are largely in motion, which is brilliant. So I'm excited. This week is off to a very good start. The... Tenth week of the year. Wow. See, you're, this is this is interesting. Like twenty percent through the year now. The end of this week, more or less. I mean, probably even more so because I, I'll probably take a a couple of weeks off um, at some point. So it's flying. Really, is flying through, which is fantastic. And you know, it's good pace, good momentum. Big week this week for. So a couple of records this week. This will be the first I've booked. Yeah, I've booked the most number of discovery sessions ever in one month. So February, I suppose they're all technically booked in February, but they're all for March. So March is going to have the highest number of discovery sessions, which is a nice, nice one for me. And yeah, I'm kind of proud of that. Like again, I, I've said this before, <clears throat> I'm quietly confident of two things. One, I'm getting in front of the right people. And then two, I'm now excited and confident about the idea of Look, if you can book enough discovery sessions and do them exceptionally well, which is what my focus is, then you will convert these into clients over time. <clears throat> so I'm excited. These will actually be the first ones of the year, which is great, but there's lots of them. So I've got four booked in, which is brilliant, really happy about that. And I've got the first one tomorrow, second one on Friday, and then the other two in the coming weeks. So. And two of them are going to be online. I think the other two will be in person. So it's a nice blend. At that point, I'm going to have, yeah, I, I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to let that sit. I think I just want to see how the, how the, how tomorrow's goes in relation to my delivery of it. Because, like anything, there's a structure to it. Yet, I suppose what I'm trying to say is, if you're doing a discovery session the way I do it often, it's only a good thing because you're kind of always sharpening the the blade so to speak whereas I haven't done one in a little while so I feel like it's kind of like one of those ones where you haven't played a match in a while so you need a bit of a warm-up so we'll see how we get on tomorrow but I, it, look it's with a great business a great person it will be valuable and yeah I'm actually going to talk a little bit probably this week about how I onboard clients and going through the process of that and part of it will be talking about the discovery in a little bit more detail too which I've done in the past but not quite the way I would have liked so that's something to look forward to. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> the, what's happened elsewhere today? Yeah, really good progress. The pipeline is, ah, as far as, I mean, you can never stop working your pipeline, I suppose, but as far as, I suppose, priorities or key things there, feeling really good, really getting quite confident at communicating via Loom. So that in itself, I'm just gonna make a note of this actually, because I think communicating via Loom, uh, for me, has been probably one of the biggest things I, I haven't really done too much in the past. I've done a few Looms for various reasons, but never really in this much detail. So it's that idea of, look, can I communicate something? With clients, I think it's quite obvious, right? There'll be things that I can show them in a 5, 10, 15 minute, probably 5 or 10 minute Loom that allow me to talk about it, explain it, show as well as, show and tell, I guess. <clears throat> and 
it lends itself very well to if I'm following a process where I'm having a strategic session with a client and then I'm following up in the month, a loom really lets you condense what probably would be like a 30 minute call into like a five or 10 minute video that they then watch. I think it also helps that my clients so far, I don't know if it's by chance, but they're all very responsive to looms. I would imagine there's some people out there that just probably wouldn't be that interested or wouldn't watch them. <clears throat> so maybe I'd have a very different perspective on, on how effective they are. But for me anyhow, so far, that's been going well. And I'm using them in relation to pipeline as well. So probably not that often so far, but they seem to be two things I really like about them. One, it's kind of like a, like it's pretty compelling, right? I mean, if I create a genuine, if I, if I like same with the voice notes, right? We've talked about this quite a bit, but the voice note is you can't really automate it. And then the loom, I know there are ways to automate looms, but the ones I'm doing would be very hard to do. So I'm taking like four to six to seven minutes usually for a loom. I'm sending it to a certain person at a certain stage of the pipeline or someone that's in a certain place or someone that's said a certain thing. So I'm not sending too many of them, but the ones I'm saying I'm sending, I'm, I'm pretty confident will at least be watched. And sure enough, they are being watched. And I just see that as like, you know, you know that someone's clicked on that. You don't know they've watched it, I guess. Maybe there's a way to tell that. I'm not too sure on the analytics and on Loom, but I know as much as they've clicked the link and they've opened it. And that to me is, that's pretty good. Right? It's better than clicking a link on an email and the link takes them to something else, something random. They're watching something from me that's trying to, I suppose, educate them or even help them. <clears throat> I mean, I really do genuinely want to try and add something of value to people through these looms. So, pretty happy with that. Uh, and yeah, as I say, so, you know, that was kind of the, those were the main two things. I had a quick call today and that was fine. But overall, Monday, pretty productive. I, yeah, I thought, I thought a couple of things about what, where I could go with this. I really just wanted to do one thing actually, which would be, I wanted to tag on to, so I told my story part one a couple of Fridays ago. And instead of doing it on Fridays, I think I'll just do it whenever I kind of feel like it. So what might be of interest for people is, <clears throat> I left out a story piece. I had just explained how I'd gone from an unpaid internship into another job. And it was very much an entry level position. What I'll do now is take, I'll explain a little bit about this and then tie it into the, the probably the big full time role they had in London, which is part of a, a startup. The, the role I had originally, so I went from the unpaid internship into a position where it was with a family member who was running their own business. They downsized the company they were with, or had been operating, sorry, and my role was really to help them, I suppose, operate the, the, the trim down company. Fantastic experience in many ways. It was really interesting to just sit beside someone who was running their own business. Uh, granted, the business they were running was significantly smaller than the one they'd ran maybe a few years prior to that, I think they had 20 or 30 employees in the city. Uh, this was more like much more of a streamlined operation. But I was able to sit beside them, just see them operate the company and, and even get a sense for what it's like to, to be an entrepreneur because they had an incredibly creative mind. They were always coming up with ideas. I think where I tried to help was, was probably executing on some of the ideas. I'll be honest, you know, I look back at that and I think, Again, it's always going to be the case, right? But there's so much you could have done more to help or there's so many things you would have done differently to be more impactful. But at the time, I was just focused largely. It was digital marketing broadly, but it was quite focused on content. And uh, yeah, that was, that was for the guts of a year. <clears throat> but what it did was it's more time on the CV. It makes complete sense. It helps me. It's an extra layer to the story I'm telling about my experience and my knowledge. And I suppose from my perspective, the unpaid internship was a stepping stone, but it was never going to be enough on its own to get me what I considered probably the next stage, which I'll come back to. And uh, this did. So 
by the end of this, I now had like a year and a half, which I always positioned as like two years of experience in digital marketing roles. And yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a stretch, but you have to, you have to work with what you've got and yeah, tell your story around it. And I was able to do that. But that, that, that role in itself was, yeah, it was valuable for different reasons. I think as with a lot of things I'm seeing, for every one thing you do exceptionally well, nine things go wrong or don't go well in business. And I'll be really honest in the sense of, in both of those first two companies I were with, was with, sorry, in the internship or the, the role I had, you know, you just saw that. Like in any given week, the founder could try 10 things, one might work or two might work. And I think it just it was just a really hit home to me the importance of just getting comfortable with things not really going to plan or things not going smoothly or no week, no two weeks would ever be the same. And even being in the business, like if those businesses could feel completely different today to what they were last week. They could feel like entirely different companies. So the owner who I worked with in the second role as a digital marketing exec. I mean, I could come into that company tomorrow and the problems that come up wouldn't even be on the horizon. It wouldn't even be something we'd be thinking about. Equally, there could be, I could log on or, or meet up with meet up with them on, on Thursday and there'd be opportunities they're talking about that I've never heard tell of. Things just moved incredibly quickly. Uh, and equally, the problems just, just kept coming. And yeah, it was just a real eye opener. And ironically, it, it did the opposite. I mean, for some people that would probably put them off doing their own thing or running their own business. To me, it kind of, I don't think excited me was the right word. It, I was just intrigued. I, I just I just always felt like, you know, the, the, I'm scratching the surface here when it comes to what it's like to be in a business or to run a business, but it gave me enough Ah, I was like dangling the card in front of me. I was I was very intrigued. I was interested to see what it would be like. All right, well, I've worked in two companies of certain size. Now, what would a slightly bigger one be like? <clears throat> and that's kind of where I'll pause because what I ultimately decided to do then was, I was like, right, need to get back into London City. You need to get back into you know a bigger startup or a bigger company. I suppose I need to push myself a bit more and try and get that more permanent full-time position because I've had an unpaid internship. I've had by all means a temporary part-time opportunity and they've got that year and a half of experience under my belt. <clears throat> I probably took way more experience and value from those than what it would look like on paper, but now I need to apply it in a more, I suppose, full-time permanent basis in an environment where that probably would be rewarded. So yeah, that's the next part I just wanted to share. It's quite a quick one, but it tees up the next couple of parts of that story. So I think there'll be five or six parts to this. I'll try and tell it over the course of the next week or two in various videos. I'm not gonna do a big blast in a row of all of them, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that was a lot. Wow, okay. I'm gonna go finish up the day and uh, stop talking. I feel like I really blurred out a lot of stuff there. All right, 